All right, Shalom, Shalom. It's Brother Ozma Watt once again with another lesson. First and foremost, we're going to give our praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, and that's all praises to the Heavenly Father in His Son's name, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. <clears throat> his real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. I also uh, want to say Shalom to all the sincere hearted Akim or Akwath. I want to give double honors to my elders who taught me this truth. And uh, so today, you know, we're uh, going to touch into, you know, an important topic, right? Because as we see, you know, all these things going on, you know, that we go into, you know, quite often, you know, whether you may be hearing about me or about another brother, you know, or, you know, you just simply seeing these things happening in the news, you know, such as, uh, you know, these birth pains that we're in. As a matter of fact, let me grab this real quick. The book of Matthew 24. 24. All right, because right now we're on the we're in the brink, man, you know, of entering into uh, Jacob's trouble. You know, and Jacob's trouble is known as uh, really that hour of temptation, you know, in the scriptures. You know, we're going to uh, get that scripture. But first, let me uh, grab this in Matthew 24, verse, um, start at verse uh, six. He says, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you be not troubled, right? And we're, <laughs> each and every day, you know, there's there's a, another war on the horizon, man. All these wars are gearing up for uh, World War III, which is the third woe that's spoken about in Revelation chapter 11, you know, which is that woe or that war that would pretty much usher in, you know, uh, the birth of our Lord, Yahweh Shah to come in here, you know, to basically finish things off, man. All right, it says, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, right? We're seeing that, right? You got, you know, uh, and that's really going into, uh, when you go, go into that word nation, it's going to nationality, you know, different, and this is where these race wars are going to come into place, you know, um, you know, different nationalities, the people are going to be clashing, you know, because there's a heavy spirit of division upon the earth. And Yahweh Shah himself is the one who put that spirit of division here. That's why he tells us in the book of Luke chapter 12, he says, think not that I come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And a sword divides. And the Lord is the, you know, the author of this division here, man. Why? Because this is not the time for us to be united. Right? And he says, and kingdom against kingdom. And we see that. It says, and there shall be famines. Right? And famines are hitting uh, a lot of places in the world right now, man. Just because it hasn't hit, you know, exactly where you are, whether you may be living in Dallas, Texas, or whatnot. Famines is, uh, is happening a lot. You know, when you consider, um, you know, our Latino brothers and sisters, you know, is dwelling in, um, you know, what do they think um, they have some famines hitting in Cuba right now due to uh, the lockdowns and the government basically restricting food. Um, famines on the West Coast, you know, damn, you have the, the largest wildfire ever to hit California, ever to hit the United States, right? And it's, it's kindled right now as we speak. And, um, you know, I got a report that, is pretty much damn near burnt through all the, um, you know, all the um, all the farms where the U.S. gets most of its, you know, its, its food from. So famine is a thing that's about to be very familiar. Uh, it's going to be up close and personal to every household, you know, not just living in America, but everywhere, man. All right. So he says, and there shall be famines and pestilences. You know, you got all these different types of, you know, variants going on. Well, guess what? There's going to be more variants, man. Man made and Yahweh made. You know, even the ones that. As man made, Yahweh was the one who gave man that knowledge to basically knock itself out, man. <laughs> right? He says, and earthquakes, right? And uh, Alaska just had its largest, well, the United States just had its largest earthquake just two weeks ago. Did a video on that, right? He says, and in diverse places, all of these are the beginning of sorrows. All right? So basically, so the Lord gave us a time frame. You know, he gave us a window to where we can measure all these things going on, man. That's why Second Ezra chapter 9 tells us, let me grab this real quick. Second Ezra 9 and 1, he says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently, right? How do you measure the time that you're living in? Under the, the rule of these prophecies. These prophecies serves as a rule or a ruler, a measuring stick, right? He says, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when you see part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, and we just read some of those signs, earthquakes, famines, uh, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Those are parts of the signs past. It says, when you see part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then you shall understand. And that's why the book of Proverbs chapter four tells us to, 
uh, with all that getting, getting understanding, right? Because a lot of people see these things going on. A lot of people see these signs, but they don't understand what's going on, right? He says, then you shall understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So as we see all these things going on, you know, for you in this in this video, as all others, is directed into the sincere hearted, sincere hearted Akim and Aqua. Right? As we see these things going on, and the scriptures are already already warned us what these things are leading up to, which is the time of Jacob's trouble, which is a time in Earth's history that will be unrivaled with any other time, man. All right, we can consider all the troublous times that the Lord has um you know allowed humanity to suffer, you know, because of its uh because of its sins. This time is, hey, you cannot compare this time with any other time, man, right? And we're entering into that time of, uh, or that hour of temptation. Revelation 3 and 10, he says, <clears throat> it's a lot here. It says, because thou has kept, see that? Because thou has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. And we're, if you want to be kept, right, from the hour of this temptation, it starts with you keeping his word, right? And this is the, the magnitude and the depth and the seriousness of us having this word, man. And this is why you can never thank Yahweh, why Yahweh shot enough, you know, through the Holy Spirit to that, you know, giving you this word. Because this word is literally a bridge to your salvation. Let me grab this real quick. Because this is not a light thing that we have. You know, knowing that you're Israelite, you know, knowing the necessary steps, you know, that one must take in order to be found in the good graces of Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, you know, which the chiefest of that is repentance, right? And this is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, he says, but continue thou, see that? He says, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. And what have we learned? We learned the doctrine of Yahweh Shah, right? And how did you learn that doctrine? Through his men that he has set up his disciples that he has set up in these last days to feed us, to feed the lambs of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot with, let me grab that real quick. Jeremiah 3 and 15. He says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, meaning according to my mind, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And that's exactly what the Lord has given us, right? The Lord has given us men, right? That he is endowed and due to uh, his spirit upon Right, that was going to feed us in these last days with true knowledge and understanding, because these you know phony pastors, you know, such as you know T.D. Jakes and you know Creflo Dollar, you know those cats, right? They have not been feeding the lamb of Yahweh Bashem, the lambs of Yahweh Bashem Yahushah, with true knowledge and understanding, right? Because their doctrine comes with death, their doctrine comes with nothing but falsehood surrounding it. But as you as we get closer to the end of time, we see who truly has this true gospel, man, that's supposed to go out into the four corners of the world and then the end shall come, right? He says, but continue down the things which you have learned and has been assured of. Yeah, you must know, you must be assured of this doctrine, man, because now is not the time to be second guessing, well, dang, is this true, the word of God, or is this not, right? <laughs> is this man written, I mean, is this man made or what? No, you have to be assured of these things, of the things that you have learned, he says, knowing of whom thou has learned them. And you also have to be assured of who you have learned them from, right? <laughs> Verse 15, he says, and that from a child, thou has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able, check this out. You have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Hamashiach, Yahushua. Going to prove to you that you have in this word this correct doctrine is literally your ticket. This is this is a bridge into your salvation. And this is why it is not a light thing for us to have this truth, man, right? And the only way, right, that we're gonna be upholding in those days is if we simply keep this truth. I cannot emphasize that enough through this video, man, because we're living in some times from where, as a matter of fact, let me grab this. All right, brother, I was listening to a brother's video last night and, um, and I was meditating upon the scripture. We're living in times, man, to where everything is going to be trying to uh, is is going to be taken away from us, right? Your home, your kids, your wife, your father, your mother, every everything, 
this is a time for major loss. But one thing we cannot afford to lose is our faith. <laughs> it's his word. Because this is what's going to see you out, man. Right? This is Luke chapter 22. And... Luke 22. Let's see. It's a lot. Give me one second. Uh, I'm going down here somewhere. All right, let me just type it in. Luke 22 and 31, all right. It's Luke chapter 22 and 31, and it says, and the Lord said unto Simon, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Now let's go into this word sift, all right? Because this is the time that we're living in, all right? Satan wants to literally sift you out of this truth. You go into this word shift, Strong's G, 4617, Siniazo. Siniazo. And it simply means to sift, shake, and deceive, right? And that's what the Lord said that he'll be doing to the nation of Israel, right? In the book of Amos chapter 9, he says he will sift us among all nations. And we see that sifting going on. The Lord is shaking, you know, a lot of us into our proper lots, you know, uh, as we, you know, enter into these final hours, right? But um, section two, it says figuratively, figuratively, by inward agitation, right, to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. And this is what Satan is constantly doing. Satan is constantly agitating your faith, right, to overthrow it, <laughs> right? He wants to take that word away from you. Why? Because he knows if he can take that word, right, then you have no salvation, right? Because once again, in Revelation 3 and 10, he says, because I has kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. So Satan has you know been set up on the left hand side for Yahweh why Yahweh Shah's purposes to basically try us man to see if we're actually going to keep this word that he has given us man All right because once again this word is not just you know some light thing this is a great pearl when you consider uh um, the parable of Matthew 13 right he likens this truth as into having a pearl and a pearl is what a pearl is a treasure man and with any treasure you're going to do what you're going to guard it you're going to keep it man right Let's go over here to uh, Proverbs 4 and 23. And he says, guard your heart. And, you know, as we go into all the time, heart in the Hebrew is law, which simply means your mind, right? He says, guard your mind above all else. Let's emphasize that again. Guard your mind above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Yeah. If you guard your mind, right, it determines whether you are, you know, on the road to salvation or the road to damnation, man. And this is why we're living in those times, man, to where you have to block out all unnecessary BS, you know, <laughs> whether it may be your wife, your husband, your job, your family, or even your own thoughts, right? You know, you know, putting yourselves in, you know, particular situations, you know, whether it may be a you know, you're going out there to a club or whatever, and you know good and well that this is not conducive into, you know, guarding your heart, right? All this extra stuff, man, we have to, we, this is the time to where you have to kick it out, man, all right? Scriptures is telling, scriptures is giving us the recipe, man, to salvation, all right? <laughs> you repent, right? And you offend less, all right? That's the right, I want to say the, uh, either the fifth or the 15th chapter. It says, in the times of your sins, repent, and then offend less, man. All right, so that's the recipe. But along with having that recipe, it comes, you know, one of the chiefest things, you guarding your mind, right? You have to guard your mind because what's inside of your mind? This truth, right? This treasure. And that's why Paul says this in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, and he says, but we have this treasure. See that? We have this treasure. And that's what, that's the parable that Yahweh Shah said in Matthew 13, likened unto this truth, this pearl, this treasure, this truth. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And what's that earthen vessel? 
You, <laughs> your mind. That's why you have to guard it, man. That's why banks, you know, or gold uh, reservoir, you know, a place where they store gold, they have what across it? Or they have who across it? They have guards. Why? Because what's inside of that, 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 uh, that building yeah, it's treasure. So they set up guards to protect it, right? And this is basically what we're doing on a macro, on a macro level, man. And also on a micro level, you should be doing every day, guarding this treasure that's inside of you, right? And he says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us. And that excellency of the power is what? The salvation, man, experiencing that salvation he has promised unto you, all right? And he says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. And that's that time of the, that's the hour of temptation. Because in the hour of temptation, man, that's going to try the whole world. We're going to be troubled on every side, man. Everywhere you look, there's going to be a problem, a major problem, all right? But yet, we're not going to be distressed, right? Why? Because we've kept the word of uh we kept the patience of his word man we kept his truth right we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken and we have to remember this man right because the scriptures never said it's going to be an easy walk he's telling you straight up yeah you're going to be persecuted but not forsaken he says cast down but not destroyed always bearing about in the body of the of in the body the dying of the Lord Yahweh Shah, that the life also of Yahweh Shah might be made, uh, might be manifest, meaning made known in our body. And how was Yahweh Shah's life made man manifest or made known in your body? When he re resurrects you up, man. <laughs> when he imparts that salvation unto you. That's how it was made known, man. His life. All right. So <clears throat> let me go over here because. Like I said, we're in those times, man, to where Satan is sifting you. He's agitating your faith to overthrow it, but you have to keep it, man. This is uh, 2nd Andrews 12 and 36, and it says, um, and let me grab it in the uh, regular KJV version. Uh, I don't want the 16 letter. There we go. Uh, all right. It's locking. Here we go. Second Ezra chapter 12, verse 36. And he says this He says, um, Thou only, right, has been meet to know this secret of the highest. All right, and this is why we once again got to give, you know, praise on the Lord to Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah to giving us this truth because he likens this truth as into what a secret. That's why in Matthew 13, let's grab that real quick. Matthew 13, 16, I mean, Matthew 13 and 10, he says this He says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. And that them is the two thirds and the heathens, man. Right. But given unto us. Right. So if, it's, if this thing is given unto us, what does he expect us to do with it? Keep it. Second Ezra 12. Right. In verse 36, you only has been meet to know this secret of the highest. Therefore, write all these things that you have seen in a book and hide them and hide them and teach them to the wise of the people whose hearts, meaning whose minds you know may comprehend these secrets, right? And that's what the Lord has done unto us. He's, he hasn't given this word unto everybody, man. He's only given to them who he knows whose minds can take it, receive it, comprehend it, and hide it. When you go into that word, hide it just simply means to keep it, right? So let's go over here. Let's go back to Revelation 3 and 10. He says, because I was kept, the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. We shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Let's grab this real quick. Kept. Kept in the Greek means to attend to carefully. 
to guard. See that? To guard. You're guarding what? You're guarding this treasure. That's the side of you, man. All right? He says to uh, metaphor to keep one, to keep one in the state in which he is. And that's exactly what Yahweh Shah will be doing unto the elect. He's going to preserve the elect. All right. And that goes into his prayer in John 17, which he prayed for his uh, for the disciples. John 17 and 6, he says, I have manifested, meaning made known thy name unto the men which thou hast given me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So the elect, only the elect is going to be found keeping the word, man. So if you lose your faith, if you lose this truth, when persecution comes, that goes to show that you were never his, right? I believe in, even in, in the same chapter, he says that um, no man can pluck them out of my hand. And that's what Satan is desiring to do unto all of us, man, right? So going to show that if you get plucked out of your house's hand in a form of you losing this faith, you were never his, man, right? Because as we're reading, the only people that's going to, you know, be preserved, that's going to be kept, you know, by Yahweh Shah are those men, you know, and women that's going to be keeping the faith, man, keeping his word, guarding his word. And it starts with you guarding your mind. All right. This is why we have to, you know, eliminate, you know, anything that's going to, you know, that's infil infiltrating our minds, you know, all this garbage, you know, and it may be, you know, you listen to some, you know, some music that may be affecting your spirit, having conversations with particular people that's affecting your spirit. Because, you know, those little small things add up, you know, and it's eventually going to have a, um, you know, it's going to put out a certain vibration, you know, upon your mind to where, you know, it, it makes basically this holy, this holy thing, you know, common. Because, you know, the, the spirit in the flesh is always at war, man. All right. And you got to feed that spirit, man. You got to feed that spirit. And it comes with you guarding your mind. So let's go over here to the book of Luke. All right, and because we, we have to be found by Yahweh Shah's mother. His mother was an upright woman, right? This is Luke 2 and 17 says, and when they uh, had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And that's what we're doing. We're making known abroad, you know, everything that's concerning Yahweh Shah, right? He says, and all they that heard it, all right, all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds, and those shepherds would simply be, you know, in today's terms, Yahweh Shah's disciples, right? Because shepherd simply means pastors, right? And we are those pastors, we are those shepherds that's feeding you with, uh, you know, true knowledge and understanding according to the mind of Yahweh Yahweh Shah. It says, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds, but Mary, see that, but Mary kept. Mary kept all these sayings. I mean, it's like it kept all these things and pondered them in her heart, in her mind. Now, when we go into the Greek definition here and kept in this um, uh, verse, it's a different uh, word. Strong's G 4933, Suntereo. Suntereo, and it says to preserve to preserve a thing from perishing or being lost, to keep within oneself. So Mary, right, she she preserved, right, that word, those words that are being told to her by those shepherds, by those pastors that was expounding upon that child, Yahweh Shah. All right, that's what we had to be found doing. Once again, we had to be found preserving all these, you know, all, what do you think all these lessons are set up for, man? These lessons aren't set up you know, just for you to just, you know, hear it, <laughs> you know, and then they escape your mind. These lessons are set up, you know, through the grace and through the favor of Yahweh Shah. So you can keep it, man. Right. <laughs> and America, you know, and the reason why, you know, a lot of our people, you know, uh, tread things light or oh, tread this word lightly, you know, it's because America has, you know, taught people to not have, not to put any type of value upon particular things man everything is common everything is just you know regular you know but that's america searing your minds with the high iron you know with that reprobate spirit not being able to discern you know holy from uh unholy clean from unclean right but for you know those of you brothers and sisters who can you know basically <laughs> you know distinguish what's true and what's real right you're gonna keep it man 
It says to keep within oneself, keep in mind, right? Keep in mind a thing lest it be forgotten, all right? Because when all hell breaks loose, man, you cannot afford to forget, you know, this truth, right? Because in the elect's minds, you know, when, when hell's breaking loose, scriptures, you know, as they see things and as they're, you know, as things, you know, uh, tribulations hitting their way, you best believe that the Holy Spirit is going to bring to mind, you know, uh, well, hey, that's what he said in Luke chapter 12. He says, give no thought for what you shall say, for the Spirit shall give you, you know, uh, the things that you're going to say. Right. So when all hell breaks loose, the spirit is going to give us, you know, these scriptures, you know, that we've been keeping and meditating upon, you know, uh, so so we can be preserved. That's why he said in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that times. Right. And that wisdom and knowledge is in the form of its truth, you know, but it can't be the stability of your times if you forget it. If you treat it lightly. Right. So let's read that again. It says. But Mary kept, meaning she guarded, she preserved all these things and pondered them in her heart. I mean, she meditated upon it, man. You know, so I want to show you that when you listen to the words of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot from his men that you set up, you know, you just don't hear it and just, you know, turn off the video and just, you know, go back to doing some, you know, some common stuff. No, you got to sit on it, man. You got to meditate on it because that's how you keep it. That's how you keep it, man. You got to chew on it. Because what is this word known as? Bread. All right? <laughs> if you just, you know, scarf down bread, you're not going to be able to, you know, digest it well. You have to take your time and, you know, take little bite sizes and, you know, savor it, man. Enjoy it. All right? So let's grab this in Hebrews. Hebrews 2. And it says, and look at the title. It says to give heed, meaning pay attention. It says, therefore, we ought to give the, the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. See that? To the things which we have heard. All right? So everything that you've heard concerning this truth, you got to pay attention to it, man. You know, if you got to go back and watch, you know, uh, videos more than once or, you know, go back and read the same chapter that you just read yesterday, by all means, do it, man. All right? Because Israel, we're very forgetful people. That's why he gave us the, you know, the law twice. <laughs> He had to reiterate himself more than once, man. He says, lest at any time we should let them slip. See that? Basically meaning that you didn't keep that word. All right? Lest at any time we should let them slip. He says, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And that salvation is in the form of you basically keeping his truth. You're keeping his word. So if you neglect his word, you're neglecting your salvation. So he says, how are you going to escape that, man? He says, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, meaning confirmed by his disciples. And let's get all that in the NLT real quick. Hebrews 2 and 1. So we must listen very carefully. See that? Hold on. Let's go over here to the book of Luke. Because even the way how you listen, man, he told us to pay attention. It's Luke 18 and 8. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. <laughs> Take heed, therefore, how you hear. Meaning pay attention to the way how you listen, man. Right? That's why Hebrews 2 and 1 says, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard. Or we may drift away from it. So there's a, there's a way. You know, there's a way how you have to eat this meal, man. Once again, this is not a common meal, you know, that anyone can just, you know, come and eat. First, you have to have been invited to this banquet, man. And when you come, you, you just can't eat it just like a, a, a average Joe Blow. You have to eat this meal like a king. You have to eat this meal like a princess. All right. When you consider the ancient world, you, you know, you look at you may look at some of those old movies of like those ancient kings or whatnot. Hey, they ate those meals with, with elegance, man. They savored those meals. They didn't eat those meals like a nigga and then just scarf and stuff down. Well, that's how we got to eat this truth, man. We got to be careful to how we hear it and how we digest it, man. Because once again, this is these are steps to how you keep this truth so you can be kept in the time of tribulation, in the hour of temptation. 
He says, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. For the message uh, Yahweh delivered through angels has always stood firm, right? Including, including what you hear now. This is delivered through angels. He says, and every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. So what makes us think we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Yahweh Shah himself and then delivered to us by those who heard him speak. See that? So we got to pay attention to how we hear, right? Unless those things be taken away from us. So let's get this in the NLT, Luke 8 and 18. He says, so pay attention to how you hear. This is Yahweh Shah's words, man. <laughs> the very one that's, you know, who has salvation or destruction in his hand, man. He says, so pay attention to how you hear, to those who listen to my teaching, to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. And that's exactly why we see a lot of brothers and sisters, you know, get expelled out this truth. Because <laughs> they never paid attention, right, to the words. They heard it. They heard it, but they didn't listen. They didn't digest these words. They didn't truly value this word. They didn't value this pearl, this treasure. So the Lord said, you know what? <laughs> Since you're not valuing this treasure, I'm going to take it away from you. Give it to somebody else. So let's read that again. So pay attention to how you hear. To those who, to lock it, to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken from them. Yep. Let's get another scripture and we'll end it out. It's, uh, Luke 11 and 21. It says, when a strong man, right, armed, keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. Yeah, and you want to be found being that strong man that's armed, keeping your palace. And the scriptures tell you how to arm yourself. Ephesians chapter 6. All right, you should go read that for tonight. It says, when a strong man armed, Keeping his palace, his goods are in peace, meaning his treasure is in peace, right? He says, but when a stronger than he shall come upon him, and, you know, Satan would be stronger than you if he, you know, has taken his word, taken his truth away from you. He says, and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divides his spoils. Yeah, Satan is going to, you know, basically, um, he's going <laughs> to, you know, take exactly what you had away from you, man. He's going to take away that truth. Let's skip down to verse 28. He says, but he said, yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of Yahweh and keep it. You're a blessed individual. If you hear this word and you keep it, man, because that's what's going to keep you from the hour of temptation. Let's finish off that scripture once again. Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that is how you receive, you know, salvation, man. You know, of course, it's going to be ordained. It's already predestinated who's going to receive that salvation. But those who, you know, those precious elect spirits that's going to be tasting that salvation will be found keeping that word, man. So if, you, if you're a part of the hopeful elect, if, you're, if your desire, you know, is to be a part of that number, well, you, you will be given diligence to be keeping this word, man. And be paying attention to how you listen to these words and meditate upon these words, right? Because these are not just average words, man. These are words of a king. Let's grab that real quick. Ecclesiastes 8 and 4. He says, where the word of a king is, there is power. All right, so when we read these scriptures, right, all these scriptures was, you know, given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, man, you know? From Yahweh Shah, you know, from, from his heavenly father. And these are words of a king, man. And there's power in them. All right? So you're going to treat, you, you shouldn't be treating these words, these decrees, these commandments, you know, of our king as a common thing. He says, and who may say unto him, what doest thou? So, yeah, man. So, you know, with that, I hope you, your brothers and sisters, was edified, you know, and, uh, you know, keep this word, keep this word, man, because this is what's going to allow us to see and partake of that salvation that Yahweh Shah wants to uh, give unto his elect, man. So with that, hope you're edified. Until next time, Shalom.